my name, I think, is Julian Holloway, and the character I played was Major Shorthouse. Um, I had done a bit, uh, a bit in uh, Follow That Camel, and also a bit in Carry On Nurse. And uh, they, Gerald, Thomas and Peter Rogers, uh, thought sufficiently about my work in those two films to give me a bit of a, a rise in the size of part. And so it was sent to me as an offer. Uh, about the character that I played, um, well, I mean, the thing with any of the carry-ons is the, there was not a huge amount of depth <laughs> uh, to anything. So, I mean, you were talking really more about uh, a stereotypical type of English person who existed around that time in the British Raj. In true carry-on <laughs> tradition, uh, we didn't stray very far. Uh, certainly, my first day of the polo match was in the grounds of Pinewood Studios. <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, we basically had to walk into the garden, and there it was. Um, Dick Van Dyke was also filming Chitty Chitty Bang Bang at the time, and he had gone for a sabbatical during his lunch break, uh, had probably had a couple of scoops on the way and arrived on our set, not really knowing where he was. <laughs> uh, but they did, the stills photographer did manage to take a picture of him visiting with us. So um, it was rather like Dick Van Dyke was visiting the poor relations in another part of the studio. Well, the makeup was extremely straightforward. I think I was in the chair for maybe five minutes. Um, and uh, the costumers were hired from, I think, Bermans, um, who were the leading costumiers of the day. With Kyber, the, the dinner party scene is unquestionably the high spot of the picture. Um, and I mean, we shot it for three or four days. Uh, the meal was pretty disgusting on the first day. By the end of the, the shoot, there was bits of polystyrene in the soup and God knows what. So it was, it was absolutely astonishing that no one got sick because it was high, highly unhygienic, but very funny. absolutely fine because uh, I'd known Sid. Sid had uh, done a couple of pictures with my father um, in the 1950s, uh, the Lavender Hill Mob and the Titfield Thunderbolt. So I'd known Sid since I was a little boy. So uh, he and I got on very well together and, and uh, it was uh, extremely pleasant and easy uh, to play our scenes together because we had a certain kind of shorthand, which was uh, a great help. Kenneth was a law unto himself. <laughs> uh, he, I, I was very fortunate. I also got on very well with Kenneth. And uh, uh, I mean, he, Kenneth was uh, a, a strange man because, uh, his defenses were up most of the time. If you could get through the defenses, he was quite a different proposition uh, to the persona that he offered up to the, to the public and was uh, much more of a, a deep thinker and uh, uh, quite a serious fellow uh, in many respects. 
Um, and uh, so once you got through that and he trusted you, um, he was a joy. Joan was, Joan was great. She was a tremendous giggler. You could set her off in a matter of seconds and she would literally get herself into such a state she would be weeping with laughter. And so we used to play on that a great deal and wind her up. Um, and, uh, but she was, she was terrific company. And, and uh, I mean, we were very lucky to, to on the whole, work with a, a set of extremely nice people. I don't really think I have a, a favorite per se. It was just a, it was a very good team effort, that whole picture. Uh, and, and also the fact that uh, the, I think when they were in period costume, it took the edge off the slightly iffy jokes. Uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a very good team effort, I think. And a, and a very happy shoot. I was just thinking this morning before, before we started this, interview that I remember uh, I had a, a, a minicab driver uh, at the time who had shared a prison cell with Anthony Newley uh, because Anthony Newley had been uh, arrested for driving without a, a driving license and um, had spent a, a few days in, in prison. And this minicab driver said, uh, you know Anthony Newley? So I said, yes. He said, I shared a prison cell with him. He said, and you can say to him next time you see him, Bill sends his love. And if he doesn't remember me, he tells him to go and fuck himself. <laughs> the Carry Ons had, had um, exactly the same schedule uh, for each picture. They, they, were always a six, it was a six week shoot. Gerald Thomas normally would come in under budget and under schedule uh, because they were uh, they were run very uh, cheaply, as you know, uh, and so uh, it never varied. For Peter Rogers was cheap. He was very cheap. Um, no one got rich making carry-on films apart from Gerald Thomas and Peter Rogers. They they were very very quickly done, and um, but uh, as far as uh, my memory of that particular film was concerned, it was nothing but happy. My great pleasure, Andrew. You take care and a happy Christmas.